Welcome. Today, the first Sunday in July, we celebrate the fifth Lord's Day after Pentecost. We will welcome you to this time of worship. If you intend to partake of the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, kindly ensure that there is available a small table covered with a white cloth on which you will have placed the bread, be it a loaf or slice, and the cup, a drink of grape or cranberry or plain water. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Gentle shepherd, come and be. share now in the call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord our God who made heaven and earth. Our salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sins and rose for our justification. Our confidence is in the Holy Spirit who enables us to become God's children. The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Our God reigns, we shall be glad and wait for his word. Gather Christians, let's now celebrate as we sing. Gather Christians, let's now celebrate. Gather Christians, the Lord we now will reign. Gather Christians, behold we come. Jesus, our saving Lord, we break his word now, and break the bread, as we proclaim he is risen from the dead. Gather Christians, let's now celebrate, gather Christians, the Lord we now await, gather Christians, be holy come, rejoice and say. All now as one community, praise and honor the Trinity. Let the soul now, with one accord, sing out our praise. 
for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. And a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these your laws in our hearts, we beseech you. And having heard the commandments, let us come to God in prayer as we confess and seek forgiveness. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against each other in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear then the good news. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Thanks be to God.
We listen now to the ministry of the word. First of all, the lesson from the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, chapter 24, verses 34 to 38, 42 to 49, and 58 to 67. I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going, I am standing here by the spring of water, let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I will say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink. And who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I finish speaking, in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse along with Abraham's servant and his men, and they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Belaharoi and was settled in the Negeb. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field and looking up he saw camels coming and Rebekah looked up and when she saw Isaac she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said it is my master so she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah and she became his wife and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle comes from Romans 7, reading from verses 15. 
written for you. Believe in his promises, God cannot fail, for what he has said he will do.
Christ our Lord. is taken from the Epistle to the Romans, chapter 7, verse 19. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. I entitle this sermon, Overcoming Evil. The 19th century Scottish writer and poet, Robert Louis Stevenson, is well known for a novel entitled, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In it, Stevenson tells the story of an intelligent, disciplined, kind and good-natured scientist, Henry Jekyll, who dabbles in the darker side of science. And in his meddlings, he discovers that he has another side to himself. He has a second nature that is not good, but evil. And the end product of his scientific experiments is Edward Hyde, a carefree, reckless, evil, irresponsible, and criminal-minded human being. The Jekyll and Hyde story highlights a truth, that there are struggles for us as we go through life. If we are basically good, we often find ourselves wrestling with a side of our character that, if not controlled, could have 
serious repercussions. How do I overcome evil? Is a question being asked by many. In Robert Louis Stevenson's novel, Dr. Henry Jekyll succeeds for a while in bringing evil Mr. Hyde under control. Unfortunately, this is short-lived. Jekyll eventually becomes powerless. He is overcome by Hyde and both characters meet their deaths. Today, the emotion of fear can lead persons to contemplate evil practices. The business executive of a large corporation one day becomes so scared thinking, what if I become seriously ill? What if I cannot put food on the table for myself and family? Mind you, this man is satisfactorily remunerated with insurance and pension plans, but he debates the matter in his mind for a considerably long time. Should I defraud the company? Is the idea that keeps popping up in his head, should I defraud? Now for the most, most part, he manages to suppress the feeling, but will it result in him overcoming evil for long? The man or woman who is successful in running for public office will have to be watchful lest the temptation to abuse one's position of power should get the better of him or her. Those who serve a country in the political arena, they have to ever reject the thought, look, I don't know if I will be returned to power at the next general elections. Let me take advantage of my position now. Let me use the public funds at my disposal for private gain. And for this reason, we as caring citizens, we need always to pray for our public servants that they may remain faithful and committed to serving the common good, that they may overcome evil temptations by putting self and selfish interests last instead of first. Of course, it is not only those who are high up in positions of authority who have this desire to do evil. Think of that downtown private firm. There is the cleaning woman who debates within herself that if she takes home some of the office products, roll of toilet paper, a bar of soap. They probably won't miss it because the company is doing well and she often wonders about it. She dismisses the idea, but it keeps coming up again and again and again as an okay suggestion. Can she successfully overcome these evil thoughts? Fear has caused students Students who have been doing well in school, fear has caused them to panic as exam time draws near. Maybe I should scribble some notes on a piece of paper, take it with me into the examination room, just in case. The fear of failure. It can bring about the downfall of one who has been studying well throughout the semester and who should be the last person to even entertain the thought of cheating. The Apostle Paul had written to the church in Rome, highlighting the ongoing human struggle to fight off evil thoughts and concentrate upon doing the good. And he says in the, the text for today, for I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Overcoming evil? How do we do it? If we were to think about ourselves, we will have to admit that there are ongoing struggles that we face on a daily basis. There are those who are wrestling against some form of addiction. They know what they ought to do to ensure that the body is properly treated but they are finding it difficult to, to desist from practices that are likely to harm their health. 
persons who are addicted to smoking are, are well aware of the, the likely effects of their actions. They have heard on radio or, or seen the advertisements on television that smoking can cause lung cancer. And I imagine that there are several who are trying to keep diabetes at bay, yet succumb to the temptation, indeed the lure of chocolates, sweet drinks, cakes and ice cream, the things that are naughty but nice. And some of us are tempted to do evil because of pure selfishness. We think first of self and then of others afterwards. Now, four months ago, we in Jamaica were awakened to the reality of the corona pandemic. At that time, there was the display of extreme selfishness. Those who could afford were buying and hoarding essential items that less well-off persons did not stand a chance of finding when they got to the supermarkets. And people were justifying their actions by suggesting that, that as long as they with their families were taken care of, it mattered not about others. And subsequent to the initial stages of the pandemic, the statement, we are all in it together, made persons think less of self and more about others. Recently, with the Black Lives Matter slogan, we are all blacks and whites realizing the need to acknowledge that we are one people. We are all in it together. Divisions of races and tribes and nations count for little. When we consider the history of our world, whether we think of the era of the transatlantic slave trade or of the apartheid regime in South Africa, we do need a new normal insofar as inter-human relationships are concerned. Too many of us human beings are still convinced that unless we degrade someone else, someone who might be different physically, someone whose skin color may not be the same as ours, or those who educationally or socially are in a different category from ours, unless we degrade them, we cannot get the respect of others. But today, the message that needs to be shouted from the rooftops is that we must not treat other persons as things. Treating people as things because of some of what I just mentioned has often led to criminal activity. The criminal-minded person thinks that he or she alone has the right to live. And it's the line of thinking that has often been at the root of domestic violence, of gang warfare, of murders. As long as you feel that you are superior, that you are the most important person, and that the world owes you an existence, the end result can be a rather explosive situation. Paul's words again. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Although the apostle laments that evil can seem to be so attractive that it exercises its pull upon us, evil need not have the last word. Are you thinking of doing evil? Well, you do have the option to do otherwise. And we hear Paul again giving us the recipe as found in the same chapter 7 of Romans. In verse 24, he puts the question, Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Who will help to overthrow the Edward Hyde waiting to replace Henry Jekyll? Who will help get rid of those feelings that the company for which I work must be defrauded? Or that public funds must be employed for personal gain? How can one be convinced that personal integrity, not the desire to cheat, personal integrity is what should be taken into an examination room? 
Who will uphold me as I try not to succumb to the, the temptations, the addictions, and various tantalizing offers from the world, the flesh, and the devil? Who will help me to put others and their interests as primary above mine, to serve the common good as opposed to my selfish desires? Who will help me to treat others who may be different as persons, different yet made in the image and likeness of God and not as objects, even as trash to be walked upon or snared out? Well, Paul gives us the answer. And in Romans chapter 7, verse 25, he says, Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes, Jesus is the answer. This Jesus is alive, having sojourned on earth for a long time. This Jesus is alive, having lived on earth to declare God before all people. This Jesus is alive, having been on earth to show God's identification with humanity. And this Jesus, after completing his earthly ministry, returned to be beside God, the Supreme Being. Overcoming evil, how do we do it? Indeed, we give God thanks that through the Son, Jesus Christ, the victory can and will be ours. As Methodists, we, we appreciate that struggles will be there in life. Our doctrines tell us that we all need to be saved, saved from sin and its effects. And often it is a matter of us being saved from ourselves. We preach and teach that all can be saved. This is good news which suggests that even the criminal-minded need not be stuck in evil, but can mend his ways by turning to Jesus Christ. No matter what a person might have said or done in life, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, offers pardon from our sins. Yes, our teaching also affirms that all can know that they are saved. Assurance, yes. So it is not a, a lost cause being tempted and even giving in to do evil. Change is possible if we know Jesus Christ. Perhaps the most difficult doctrine to understand is that we can all be saved to the uttermost. We can all be saved completely. We have to think well, we continue to sin daily in what we do and in what we neglect to do. We sin knowingly and unknowingly. So how can we achieve complete salvation while we live? We remember that if we love God with heart, soul, mind and strength, and we love our neighbor as ourselves, then we are certainly a work in progress, moving steadily towards perfection. The reason Jesus Christ is the one to whom we turn for help in life's struggles is that he knew exactly some of the realities we face in life. He knew that human beings tend to side with or associate themselves with those of their own race and nationality. He was fully aware of the feelings of animosity that existed between Jews and Samaritans. Yet, he had the conversation with the Samaritan woman at the well, the, the one from whom he requested a drink of water. Now, interestingly, this incident bears a, a, a resemblance to the Genesis account of Abraham's servant seeking the ideal woman to be the wife of Isaac. He met Rebecca with her water jar on her shoulder and she went down to the spring and drew and he asked, please let me drink. And her response was to offer refreshment not only to him but to his camels. And it is amazing that two human beings who meeting each other for the very first time 
could treat each other with a show of respect and hospitality. You know, it's sad to admit that what the world of today appears to be teaching is don't trust those foreigners. Stay away from those people who are different. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus was ever aware of the struggles we do face as human beings. His preparation for ministry, his preparation in the wilderness, entailed the devil trying to tempt him to do what was sinister. But Jesus kept his mind. Indeed, his total self was firmly connected to God. And towards the completion of his earthly ministry, God did not allow the evil perpetrated by those who had nailed Jesus to the cross. God did not allow that to bring about the victory. On the contrary, God used the evil to engender good for us human beings. And whenever we are tempted to do wrong, we can be steadfast, wise, and strong in so far as we allow Jesus Christ to give us the victory. So sisters and brothers, please remember that when we are faced with the struggles of deciding one way or another, we do not have to let evil win. The good can win. And the more we allow it to win, the battle over evil will be assured. The author of The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Robert Louis Stevenson, is reported once to have said, the devil can sometimes do a very gentlemanly thing. Yes, evil can be conquered. It can be replaced by the good. And the more you and I allow this to happen in our own lives, the more we can share with others that we do have the secret of overcoming evil. We turn to Jesus, who in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11 and verses 28 to 30 says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Do you desire to overcome evil? Look to Jesus, and the victory will be yours, even as you allow him to accompany you along life's way. Amen. Let us pray. God most gracious and most holy, grant us the help of your spirit as we pray for the church and the world. We pray for the church in every land those in the eight districts of the MCCA, churches of the ecumenical family, and for all local churches, that we may worship and serve you with reverence and joy. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. We pray for the peoples of the world and for the leaders of the nations, that all may work together for justice and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are ill or distressed, for the lonely and the bereaved, for those in any other need or trouble that they may be comforted and sustained lord hear us lord, lord graciously, graciously hear us 
Dear God, we remember before you all your servants who have died in the faith of Christ. We pray that we too may lead faithful and godly lives in this world and finally share with all the saints in everlasting joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us together say the words which the Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Generous God, we thank you for the gift that your people continue to share for the support of the church and its mission. We are grateful for the ministry of care exercised within the circuit in tangible ways. Continue to bless your people that they may be ever faithful in word and deed. Amen. Amen. We sing the hymn, I hunger and I thirst, Jesus my manna be. Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread into his holy hands, and looking up to heaven, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that we have this bread to offer. May it be for us the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you that we have this drink to offer. May it be for us the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. In confidence, that we enjoy the real presence of Christ in this sacrament, we lift our voices to God saying, Lord, we come to your table, trusting in your mercy 
and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. Let us then reverently partake of the sacrament. And now let us join in the thank you prayer as we say, We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all mankind. Amen. We sing the hymn, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim, through this Barren land. So receive the benediction. La paix de Dieu qui surpasse toute intelligence. Garde vos cœurs, vos âmes, dans la connaissance et dans l'amour de Dieu et de son Fils Jésus-Christ, notre Seigneur. Et la paix de Dieu qui excède tout le entendement, garde sous corazón et cimentes en el conocimiento y amor de Dieu et de su Hijo Jésus-Christ, nuestro Seigneur. And the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.